Hello and welcome to an FPGA Vision Lecture. In this video we will have a look at power consumption of digital circuits and how to achieve low power. Why is that a problem? Well, let's have a look at uh, the last years and um, in this diagram you can see that um, in the 1980s, 1990s the power consumption of digital circuits was relatively low compared to, to today's standards. Then in the 1990s there was a steep incline from one figure watt uh, numbers to uh, about 100 watt and that was a problem that was the so-called power wall where the power consumption of digital circuits really could not increase any longer because it faces problems for cooling. So around the year 2000 um, the power consumption stayed at a level of about 100 watt. This is the maximum level um, that is feasible. Of course there are some uh, circuits that um, exceed these levels. If you have a very powerful graphics uh, cards controller uh, with a big fan this might be higher. If you have consumer products this might be lower but if we're talking about high-end chips for computing this 100 watt region is the limit. So looking more general what are the problems? Why do you want to reduce power consumption? There are several reasons. Um, first is cost for supplying the power and for cooling. If you have a look at data centers, cloud computing centers, uh, a major cost factor for these uh, companies is power and cooling. About 40% um, the numbers differ but about 40% of the cost are only for cooling and for supplying the energy. So uh, if you can reduce that you save a lot of money. Looking at the individual chips also um, the cost of the package, the cost of the cooling depends on the power that is produced and um, if you have cooler chips then you can take a cheaper package which saves you money. Mobile computing is another important thing. You all have mobile devices and if you buy one of these devices one of the things you look at is how much um, will uh, the battery provide energy for. So how many days, uh, how many hours um, can I work with this device, your laptop, your smartphone. So lower energy consumption means longer run times. And if we even go down to smaller power consumptions you have a lot of smart devices that are around in your home which don't have a, uh, uh, which don't have a power cord but work on battery. So these are independent devices um, like uh, smart meters for uh, the heating and all this are um, depending only work with a battery if they have really very low power. So all these are good reasons to reduce power consumption and to consider power consumption in your digital circuit. So where does the power consumption come from? Let's have a look at the smallest CMOS gate which is the inverter. It consists of two transistors which is the pull-up transistor connecting the output to the supply voltage VDD and uh, the pull-down transistor connecting the output to ground level 0 volt. If the input is zero then the pull-up transistor is conducting giving supply voltage to the output which is a logical level of one. When the input is one the pull-down transistor is conducting so the output is zero ground voltage. In the operation of this circuit you can distinguish between two different power consumptions which is static power consumption and dynamic power consumption. To understand static power consumption let's look at the MOS transistor which is depicted here. When the MOS transistor is switched off there is still a very small current flowing between drain and source and although this current is very small uh, in a large modern uh, digital circuit you have over a billion this is 10 to the power of 9 transistors so all these small currents add up to a significant power consumption. And you have dynamic power consumption which is only present if the chip is working, if there is some processing in your digital circuit. You can see this um, in your laptop, in your computer 
which is uh, using more energy, which is using uh, the fan. If you do some processing, like uh, coding a video or other things, playing a game where you have a large amount of computing. This uh, dynamic power consumption results from charging and discharging of capacities inside your circuit, plus um, you have a cross current uh, at the moment where both transistors are conducting. Let's have a closer look at a timing diagram of uh, the working of our CMOS inverter. On the left, you see the schematic of the CMOS inverter and uh, you also see a capacity which represents the output that is driven by the inverter. This is the transmission line to the next gates and the input capacities of uh, the transistors of following circuits. To understand dynamic power consumption, let's now have a look at the timing diagram for voltages and currents. We assume that at the beginning the input voltage is 1 and then changes to 0, which means that the output voltage will change from 0 to 1. So here you see the current that is uh, flowing through the pull-up transistor. It charges the capacity, but also a small cross current is uh, present where the pull-up and the pull-down transistor are both changing their conducting state. Later on, we assume that the input voltage goes back from 0 to 1. The output voltage will go from 1 to 0. And we have the reverse behavior of the currents. Now the capacity uh, loses its uh, load uh, through the pull-down transistor. And uh, we have a negative current for uh, the charging current of the capacity. But we have also, again, a cross current where both pull-up and pull-down transistors are in the switching process. So what influences the dynamic power consumption? The dominant factor is the charging and discharging of the load capacities. The cross current is um, a smaller factor. So let's have a look at the main factor, which is illustrated by this formula. Power consumption is the sum for all circuit nodes and uh, for this sum we have to consider a number of factors, which is uh, the load capacity of the node, so the capacity of CL. We have to consider the supply voltage, VDD, which has a square factor. We have the clock frequency, so how fast is uh, the switching done. Plus we have uh, sigma, which is the switching activity, which is the probability of a change of the input signal. So all these contribute to the power consumption. So capacity, voltage, frequency, these are probably things that are well known for you, but switching activity might be new. So let's have a closer look at this variable. It is defined as the probability of a zero to one edge during a clock cycle. And it's a statistical value. For some signals, um, you can easily calculate this value. So let's have a look at a clock signal. Um, the clock changes um, its value from 0 to 1 and back from 1 to 0 for every cycle. So sigma is 1. For signals that are used in signal processing, like audio or video signal, you can have a look at statistics, um, you can make measurements of real signals, and there you will find that the um, statistical value of sigma will be around 30%, so uh, 0 0.3. Because this is a new concept, let's go to the lab and um, make some measurements. Let's have a look at real circuit and see how power consumption behaves with some test signals and with a realistic signal. So here we are in the lab and we are doing a small experiment on power consumption of an FPGA. We have a setup where we have an FPGA board uh, with an image generator. Uh, we do the image processing in the FPGA and have a look at the result on the monitor. And we are measuring the power consumption of the FPGA core uh, with an ampere meter. For 
images that we want to process, we have some test images which are real scenes. These are street scenes. Uh, we have this one, another one, third one. Plus we have some test images which are black and white stripes to have a maximum switching activity. So two pixel white, um, four pixel white, two pixel white and one pixel white. You really can't see the difference here, but we will see the difference uh, in the power consumption later on. So go back to the natural scene. And the processing, we make a very small process, a very simple processing. We take just an inverter, inversion of the image signal. So we take the laptop, we program the FPGA to do the inversion. You can see now that the uh, colors are reverted and we measure uh, a voltage of 12.1, 12.2 milliampere. For the next test images, 12.1, 12.0, 11.9. So this is the power consumption for switching activity of a real image. Now we test, take the test images, 4 pixel wide, 12.3 milliampere, 2 pixel wide, we have 13.7, so it's a significant increase. And if we take uh, the most critical signal, which has a 1 pixel wide black and um, 1 pixel wide white stripe, we um, can see the power consumption of 16.3 milliampere. So here you can see how the switching activity has a significant effect on the power consumption of a digital circuit. One question is still remaining. What can we do to reduce power consumption? Well, there are several options which can be distinguished into different categories. Let's have first a look at the technology. CMOS technology has an impact um, and uh, one thing we can do is reduce the supply voltage. Um, it has a quadratic effect, so this is a measure that is uh, really helpful. We can use uh, the CMOS technology. There are smaller feature sizes uh, which have an advantage because um, for technologies like 20 nanometer or 7 nanometers, we have smaller geometries, which means smaller capacities for internal nodes. However, there's a drawback because uh, these uh, advanced technologies have higher leakage currents than, let's say, a 45 nanometer uh, transistor. So there is a trade-off. And also um, at uh, the geometries, there are other choices that can be made. And uh, if you have a manufacturer, they will offer you different uh, transistor properties. You might have a high performance option, which is really a very fast circuit, um, small run times for your signals, small switching times for the transistors, but a little bit more power consumption. And on the other hand, you might have a low power technology uh, mode where you have a lower power consumption, but a little less performance. So you can choose where the priorities in your project is. On the side of specification and architecture, you have more options. You can reduce design complexity. So you can reduce uh, the number of nodes in your circuit. If you have a smaller circuit, um, you have fewer nodes, shorter interconnections. This can be done by choosing the right algorithm. If you do a filter, you can uh, you can decide what is the complexity of your filter. Do you want a 5-tap filter or do you need a 9-tap filter? There's a choice you can make between quality of your processing and power consumption. And also on the architecture level, um, you have choices like positioning your memory. If you have an external memory, you have high capacities on addressing this external memory. If you manage to work with only an internal memory, um, you have lower capacities and lower power consumption. Third category of um, choices you have for power consumption is really at the circuit level, at the circuit design. Um, again, you can choose um, circuit design which has uh, fewer circuit nodes and shorter interconnections, um, but also you could uh, consider switching activity and um, completely disable circuits that are not used. This is done in modern CPUs, which have sleep modes. So if part of a CPU or CPU core is not used, then 
these uh, CPUs will be totally switched off. All these are options in your design. So this gives you an overview about power consumption in digital circuits. If you are interested, uh, you can have a look now at um, designing a circuit for video processing application and uh, later on really uh, implement this system on a FPGA remote lab. So I invite you to have a look at the other lectures.